coming up on today's show. Um, and th this is the month when we not only ask people to be prepared for any kind of disaster, but we tend to think about what's important in our homes. What would you be doing like if you had to evacuate really quickly, you know, and you had to grab a few things? They look like paper, they're flat, but they're really memories. Organizing your photos today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Hey, it's September and uh, we are going to talk about uh, photo organizing. Now, you may not be watching or listening to this uh, podcast uh, in September because these go on forever because they're in the cloud and uh, people refer back to these. But we're going to bring on Darla DiMauro from Heartwork Organizing. Uh, Darla, welcome to Keeping You Organized. Thank you for having me. Now, September, you know, uh, why is it so important in September to be thinking about photos? Well, September is actually National Preparedness Month, and that's uh, designated by the federal government. But it, it makes sense because September is when we see a lot of hurricane damage, a lot of tornado damage, a lot of flood damage. Um, and th this is the month when we not only ask people to be prepared for any kind of disaster, but we tend to think about what's important in our homes and What's important in your home, John? In my home, you know, the memories. We want to keep the memories, and the photos really is where those live. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You, th you see uh, these, you know, pictures on TV and stuff, uh, and I know particularly down in the, this time of year, down in the southern part of the United States, and you always wonder, what would you be doing, like, if you had to evacuate really quickly, you know, and you had to grab a few things? You know, and photos are one of those things. But sometimes, you know, you get this boxes and boxes of them. So I, I know we're going to kind of talk about how to orga organize that. But, um, you know, being prepared for emergency, too, I just want to take a just a sidestep here. You know, we have uh, these new organizer kits as well uh, that are that are geared for that. So if you go to my organized dot life and uh, look under our organizing solutions there's some other things that people want to be organized for in an emergency as well we want to just because it's awareness month we want to make people aware of that but let's talk about photos and I, i'm kind of curious with the clients that you work with um how do they look at their photos and um i know it kind of overwhelms people because i've been in that situation before but uh, what's your initial discussion with people when it when it comes around getting photos organized? It is overwhelming, and everybody says to me the same thing. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. In reality, we all have two, maybe three, what we would call photo collections. We all have a digital photo collection because we're all taking um, pictures on our smartphones and our iPads and whatever other gadgets we have. Most of us, if you're over 20, you also have a paper-based photo collection. And those of us that are in our 40s and 50s, that's, that's what we've known most of our life. And then we have this potentially third category um, that, that slips in as well. And I always like to say, just because it's flat doesn't mean it's paper. And what I mean by that is that there are many pieces of memorabilia that really go along with what we consider our photo collection that um, they look like paper, they're flat, but they're really memories. And so these can be things like kids' artwork, or um, I live in the Northeast, a lot of people go to uh, plays here or Broadway shows, and you'll get what's called a playbill, which mm. is the program for the show, and those become memories for people. Could be tickets to a concert that you've gone to, all these types of things that really go along with that photo collection. Yeah, you know, it's interesting too. Uh, my daughter is a photographer and, you know, so she will she does weddings and, you know, she might take, you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred photos and she's got to go through all of them. And I, you know, I don't know what the, the brides end up getting, you know, several hundred. But, you know, olden days, it was like you had a, a camera that had 24 exposures on it. And it might take months for you to go through that because you framed up every single one you would not you wanted to make sure you didn't uh, take any bad ones although we do have boxes and boxes of those blurred photos that for some reason we keep too <laughs> but um so when you talk about photo organizing do you kind of have to um take and uh take it in segments i guess you know do you you do the you know physical photos first and digital in a different project or is there some way to tie them all together in one big project yeah, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. It's uh, overwhelm is, is so huge. 
with this particular organizing project. And we, we really don't want people to get overwhelmed, either because of the sheer size of the collection or because of the technology that, uh, that you really need to deal with a photo collection today. So, uh, so we do break it down. It depends on the client, it uh, depends on who I'm working with. Sometimes we'll start with the paper collection because they can physically see that and that's messy in their closet and that's what bothers them. And then other people have less, uh, less of that type of a collection that's smaller, they feel like that's manageable, but their digital collection is a mess and they have a hard time, uh, you know, maybe they, they're taking too many pictures. Like you said, the digital mm -hmm. technology is great because it made all of us better photographers because we could take 15 pictures at a clip and maybe one of them is going to be decent. Um, but uh, it also means that we have more mess and we have more to um, to organize. And that, is, that isn't even counting the pictures that we took of yesterday's lunch and the the license plate of the car that's parked next to us or the marker where we parked in the big, huge parking lot. I don't know if you do oh, that, Rick. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's interesting. I just uh, um, I, I just witnessed a car accident uh, yesterday, and I, I, I was kind of watching from the window of my office. I saw that, you know, the, I, mean, I saw the people hit each other. They get out. They talk to each other. And then, you know, I see I show I see them exchanging uh, license plates. But, you know, they did write it down. They just took a picture of it with their cell phones. You know, yeah. and again, I think we do that. I, th you know, think about, oh, what was that thing I wanted to buy in the store? I want to get exactly the same thing we have at home, and you know, you take a picture of it. So, and that's a whole other set of uh, of of, of uh, photos. So, well, here's what I want to do. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, let's start off with the physical photos first, because I want I want to dig into that, and then we'll pick up on the digital, and then that third category of other, you know, I mean, the, the, the what are not particularly flat and on paper. So. We're with Darla DeMauro talking about organizing your photos, and we'll be right back. Now, there's a place just for you. Life can be busy, and you still have to keep it all together. That's why you like to be organized and in control. Introducing MyOrganize.life, a special place where you can get ideas and solutions to organize what's important to you, your important papers, your important decisions, your important life events. We show you the ideas and products to stay organized in your life. See what's new. Stop by and say hello. Visit us at any time at www.myorganize.life. It's just for you. MyOrganize.life by Smead. Find us at www.myorganize.life. MyOrganize.life. We're back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about organizing your photos. It's September and uh, uh, National Emergency Preparedness Month. We want to be prepared for a, a bad situation. But I think also photos are one of those things that um, in, in, deep inside we want to make sure we have those you know, collected and saved for long term. And uh, Darla DeMauro, Heartwork Organizing uh, Dot com or it's heart it's what's the website it's heartwork it's heartwork org, org dot com. com right yeah heartwork organizing right right yeah okay great and you're out of the Pennsylvania area and uh, so before the break we were talking a little bit about um, you know the different kinds of photos paper digital and other let's let's start talking about paper photos and how do you attack that and I'm calling them paper but you know what I mean how yeah, do we how do we attack I, that project. So, uh, so for those of us who are visually oriented, paper can be the easiest to tackle because you literally can take up your dining room table, put them all out, sort them into whatever categories make sense for you. Usually we do chronological ordering and organizing, not always, um, but that's usually what we default to. We can put them in photo safe archival quality boxes and they can sit in your closet for a hundred years undisturbed. Mm -hmm. So um, so if that's as much as you want to do to organize your photos, that's great. And we can take once that physical collection is organized, we can take it and digitize it. And um, that's great for a lot of people. I have a lot of clients who are downsizing and they physically don't want to take that many boxes to their new smaller home. Um, or they want to protect them in the in the transit, and uh, so so digitizing is a great next step. But I have other clients who don't do that, and and just getting them organized is enough. 
Well, let's talk about digitizing uh, because uh, I know there's a lot of different ways you can do that. I know your company does a lot in the photo organizing space, so I'd like to know if there's maybe some special things because, you know, we can, you know, scan them. We can, you know, I've seen uh, on some older pictures, my wife actually takes pictures of pictures, uh, you know, digital pictures of the others. So um, anyway, so how uh, can you... uh, you know, what, what's the process or what software or what kinds of thing, tools do you use as far as digitizing the paper uh, uh, photos? Well, and I think this is where we get into sort of the three categories of how much time do you want to spend yourself on this kind of project. I do have clients that are DIY pro- uh, project people, and they would like to go and buy all the equipment um, themselves, and they would like to do it themselves, and that's great. You know, I can teach them how to do it. And then we have the second category of, no, I want you to show me how to do it. And then I'll go do it myself. And if I get in trouble, I'll call you. And it's nice to have an expert, you know, on reserve. And then uh, the third category, which is a lot of the people that I work with, is I just want it to happen and be beautiful (laughs) and be easy. And I'm, you know, I don't want to do it myself. Um, And that, quite frankly, is where I recommend a lot of people go when we're talking about digitizing photos and these other types of memorabilia because quite frankly, it's very hard and time consuming to do it at home on the printer, scanner, copy, or fax machine that most of us have at right. home. Um, it's very costly when you look at the amount of time that it takes for those uh, devices to digitize. So in my company, and I know a lot of my colleagues, we've actually invested in high quality Kodak photo scanning, photo mm-hmm. scanning specific equipment. So it, even if you're you know, you've got people around you in your community who can scan and maybe do it professionally like we do. Um, But look for somebody who has that high quality photo scanning, specific photo scanning equipment. And uh, I think that's really the the best way to go. That's why we invested in it. So uh, so when you scan these, are you scanning them to uh, a hard hard drive, a thumb drive, uh, to the cloud? uh, And then then, then, uh, just to follow up on... So then when they get it, how do they go back and like review it and look at it? Yeah. So, um, so I appreciate that you're asking the technology questions and we do cover all of that with our clients. Um, the short answer to what you asked is whatever media makes sense for the client. Yeah. So I do have some clients who want it back on a cloud uh, service, some clients who want it back on a drive, either a, a hard drive or a, a jump drive or a uh, uh, USB drive. Uh, those little jump drives can be called so many different yes, things. Yes. Um, a thumb drive, an external hard drive, you know, all of those are like the same name. Um, and I have some clients who don't want those really back. What they want is a, is a physical book, but mm-hmm. in much better condition than what they started with. But really, and so, so we do address that with all the clients and we can customize the output to what they need. But the, the most important thing is that we're telling your story. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just hand you know, a batch of photos to somebody and say, here, do something with it. What you want to do is put some thought, you don't have to, you know, it's not the end of the world if you miss a picture or two. We're not trying to write the great American novel, but what we are trying to do is tell your story, whether that is the story of the last decade or maybe your parents' story if they've passed down photos to you, or maybe it's just the story of your last vacation. And you want to be able to have that and, and remember, uh, you know, all the time, those great details about that, uh, about that event or about that period of your life. That's really what we're talking about, what it comes down to when we're talking about photo organizing. How about the, the cure? Well, I'm going to call it the curation. You could call it anything you want, because uh, uh, for one of my birthdays, my wife likes doing the scrapbooking stuff. So. Uh, she had all the, she did what you said. She took the photos and put them in the photo box by year, you know, starting out at year one all the way through. And then, um, then she sat me down and said, okay, here's what, here's what you get to do. You get to pick six pictures per year. I'm going to do one page per year. And, uh, which was, so it took some time on my end and you really had to think what, well, what in my mind represented the key moments of those years. And I had to come up with six photos. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk about that a little bit. And is, is that the kind of service that you do or that you, uh, I mean, how do you budget that into the organizing process? Because that is time intensive to sit there and, and think of what your story is 
you know, after you've got the photos, you maybe organized and, and picked out, you know. I love your wife. Just go home <laughs> and tell her that she's she's doing the right thing with you. She's keeping you on track. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, but for some people hearing that would, would literally, like their heart would seize yeah. up. Six pictures, that's not enough, you know, uh, to tell that, that even a month's worth of uh, stories. I'll tell you, I, I work with one client. We put together a yearbook every year. Hmm. And this year... Um, the story of her and her children has 812 pictures in it. Wow. It's a really big output, and we print that out. It ends up being in two books. It's a two-volume set uh, this year and last year. And uh, you know what she says to me? It doesn't matter you know, that it's, that it's two books. It doesn't matter that it's so big. It represents what we did, and it's so important for us to have those memories. So some other people would think, 800 pi pictures you know that's a that's a 200 page book and and some people would say that's way too much i don't i couldn't even fill that um so it's highly highly personalized right and um that's the great thing about photo organizing is it's not a one size fits all so if you're a diyer and you want to take the time and um you know make your your memory specific to you and you have that time great but if you still want to have that output and you don't have the time, you can find somebody, and here I do want to mention the Association of Personal Photo Organizers. It's apo.org on the web, and I'm a certified member. There are lots of certified members all over the country and indeed all over the world. And these folks live to tell your story and to reduce the technical headaches to nothing. Wow. Well, we're going to link to that. Uh, you know what? We are done. Uh out of time for this one and I want to have you back for our next episode to talk about the more of the digital organizing we kind of covered paper here and veered off into the storytelling which I think is really I think really key but uh, are you willing to come back for our, our next episode I'd love to Thank great you. okay well just before we go tell people uh, about your company and how they can get a hold of you so heartworkorg.com we are based outside the Philadelphia area we work uh, locally and nationally and we do physical organizing, space, time, information, uh, but we really are specializing as well in the photo organizing, everything from children's artwork to your family's archives to scanning and uh, helping you manage your, your digital archives as well. That's great. Well, Darla DeMauro, thank you for joining us. We'll have you back next time when we folks will dig into the digital aspect and also that third leg, which is maybe some of those items that aren't quite as flat and how we organize those. So we'll see you next time on Keeping You Organized. <laughs>